Hello, we are standing in front of the historic Bethel of Fellow African Methodist Episcopal Church here in Springtown, New Jersey. I'm presenting unto you our reader, Mrs. Cherie B. Douglas. Hello. Today we'll be reading The Real McCoy, The Life of an African American Inventor by Wendy Toll. Elijah McCoy was born in Colchester, Ontario, Canada on May 2, 1844 to George and Amelia McCoy, former slaves who had escaped from Kentucky via the Underground Railroad. The McCoys made the dangerous journey to Canada in search of freedom and a new home. To support his growing family, Elijah's father, George McCoy, joined the Canadian Army and fought in the 1837 Rebel War. In return for his loyal service, he was given 160 acres of farmland. Elijah and his brothers and sisters were raised on this farm as free Canadian citizens. Elijah Educating their children was extremely important to Elijah's parents. The laws in the United States made it illegal for slaves to learn how to read and write. In their new country, the McCoys had high hopes for their children. They were property owners and as a householder, George McCoy could vote and could send his children to public school. Elijah attended a school for black children in Colchester, Ontario, where he learned to read and write. From a young age, Elijah was especially interested in the ways mechanical devices worked. He liked to take machines apart and put them back together. Elijah's parents realized he had a special talent for working with tools and machines. They saved their money to send Elijah to a school where he could study mechanical engineering and could also learn how to design his own inventions. That school was in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1860. When he was only 16 years old, Elijah traveled 3,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean to study engineering in Scotland. While Elijah was studying abroad, the Civil War in America broke out. President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation during the war. This was the first step towards freeing slaves in America. When the Civil War ended, Elijah could live anywhere in the United States as a free man. He finished his training in Scotland as a master mechanic and engineer and sailed to America. Elijah settled in Michigan, but he had a hard time finding work as an engineer. Many people still thought of blacks as slaves. The only job Elijah could find was as a fireman oil man for the Michigan Central Railroad. In the late 1860s, there were no cars, buses, or planes. People traveled by train. By our standards today, it was a slow and expensive way to travel. The trains were pulled by engines that ran on steam produced from water heated in huge boilers located in the cab of the locomotive. The firemen shoveled coal onto fires burning inside the firebox at the back of the cab. Every hour he shoveled over two tons of coal, scoop by scoop, into the firebox. He had to work quickly. If the fires burned out, the train would stop running. The firemen also had to monitor the level of the boiler water. It, is, it was too low, pressure could build up and an explosion might occur. Elijah's job as a fireman was difficult and dangerous. Elijah was also the oil man of the train. Parts of the train had to be oiled frequently so the train would run smoothly on the track. Every few miles, the train stopped. The oil man 
would walk the length of the train oiling the axles, bearings, and other moving parts of each car. When the oilman finished lubricating the train parts, he raced back to the firebox in the cab to oversee the engine's needs. Elijah wanted to make his job more efficient. Several men had already made devices that lubricated the train mechanically, but Elijah felt he could improve on those inventions. He worked for two years on his ideas. Finally, he perfected a design of a lubricating cup that would automatically drip oil where it was needed. The train would no longer have to stop every few miles. Elijah made his first oil cup model in 1872. He applied for a patent for the government to protect his rights to his inventions. And boys and girls, that was The Real McCoy, The Life of an African American Inventor by Wendy Toole. If you like what I read, please pick up this book at your local Cumberland County Library and read more. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye guys.